Director Harway, if uh, you would do the roll call, please. Commissioner Pres President Elliott? Here. Commissioner Vice President Gavlin? Here. Commissioner Allen? Here. Commissioner Bachman? Here. Commissioner Ketterer? Commissioner Lickfly? Here. Commissioner Masharka? Here. Commissioner Sabatos? Here. Commissioner Squires? Commissioner Warbeck? Here. Mr. President, you have a quorum. Thank you, John. Uh, the minutes of uh, January 23rd were distributed. Unless there's any additions or corrections to the minutes, a motion of approval would be in order. Motion. Gavlet motion. Santa Claus second? Yes. Santa Claus second. All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? I'll go back to uh, Director Arby for awards and presentations. Okay, Mr. President, you join me in the Conservation Law Enforcement Chiefs Officer of the Year Award. And today's award is presented to Officer Tom Benevento. Uh, Officer Benevento, if you join me up here at the podium, I'm always making his way. I've got uh, uh, an explanation of uh, why Tom deserves this award uh, this year. Uh, it's um, Tom is uh, 56 years old uh, and, and is a lifelong Pennsylvania resident who grew up here in Lehigh County. <coughs> He began his career with the Fish and Boat Commission in 1995 and has spent his entire career working in the 4084 district, which is the southern half of Chester County. Unlike some WCO districts, the 4084 <coughs> district isn't a destination district that's full of famous trout streams, large heavily used lakes, and tourist attractions to draw the public to. However, you would never know that Tom's district isn't a destination district when you look at the work results he produces. Tom's always been a hard worker, and 2013 was another year where this is really obvious to us. From the standpoint of public relations, he was involved in 22 events, such as sportsman's club meetings and school programs, throughout the year. He also submitted five notes from the streams, which is one of, one of our most popular um, articles for the uh, Commission's Angler and Voter magazine. In addition, and certainly most noteworthy, is the fact that he submitted an outstanding 113 fishing and boating reports for use on the Fish and Boat Commission's website. So thanks for that, Tom. In addition to public relations, Tom makes law enforcement a priority as well. For 2013, Tom and his deputy WCOs conducted 52 days of boat patrol and made 1,064 safety checks of boats. Also, Tom and his deputies issued a total of 314 warnings and 272 citations for violations of the Fish and Boat Code, which is far and above any dis other district in the region. Tom is also known as a dependable and enthusiastic officer, and when help is needed on special law enforcement details, he's always ready to volunteer um, when the detail requires someone to conduct long-range surveillance with, with a spotting scope. In addition, Tom had three new w deputy WCOs to train, quite a task for any officer. But Tom took it all in stride, and all three successfully completed their training and are now doing a great job for the Commission's deputies. It's obvious that Tom does outstanding work out in the field, and that outstanding work extends to his office duties as well. He does an excellent job ensuring that his reports and other paperwork is, are always neat, accurate, and submitted in a timely manner, which is extremely important in today's fast-paced world. All the examples of Tom's hard work and dedication I've just described, and many more that I can, are ways that make him worthy of recognition of, of the Fish and Boat Commission's Officer of the Year for 2013. Tom, thanks very much.
Our next award is uh, something that uh, all our officers are quite, quite proud to, to receive, and it's, it's called our Top Gun Award. And we have a, uh, uh, a recognition uh, plaque in, in our headquarters that uh, these officers that receive this award get memorialized on, on the plaque. So real happy to, to announce this year our, our Top Gun Award goes to March Weaponizer. Mark is uh, presently assigned to the Northern Dauphin, North North Dauphin District, uh, District 6085, which encompasses an extensive portion of the Lower Susquehanna River. In 2013, WCO Shrub and Iser logged in 520 and a half hours of patrol on recreational boating law enforcement on the river. His patrol scheme comprised of 33 shifts of waterborne patrols augmented by numerous late night shore based compliance inspection. Uh, uh, patrols. Um, Mark facilitated two boating safety BUI special enforcement details in his patrol area and actively participated in additional three details in his neighboring districts. During 2013 recreational boating season, Mark independently apprehended and prosecuted nine individuals for BUI and assisted other officers with two additional arrests. Regarding his apprehensions, four resulted from shore based compliance inspections three from on-water patrols, and the remaining two from investigations concurrent to a boating theft accident and citizen's complaint of public misconduct. Mark, congratulations and good job. talks about um, some of the good work that's done by some of our staff. And uh, I thought it was very relevant to, to read during this part of the, the meeting because it really goes to what, what the agency is all about. And uh, this is, uh, Dear Mr. Arway, I'm pleased to inform you about the excellent, excellent customer service that I received today from Mr. Ray Benarchik, the manager of the Southeast Regional Office. I've written a letter to Mr. Benarchik outlining some of my concerns about opening day in the southern counties. Mr. Bernardchik called me in a timely manner and addressed each of my concerns in a very well thought, thought out and articulated manner. He also provided an alternative view to my concerns from his perspective, that of the commission and that of my fellow anglers. He did so in a most professional manner, one that did not discount my concerns, but that considered them respectfully with a promise to take them under consideration for next year's opening day. I was most impressed, especially since I know that my beloved Little Schuylkill River is under his watch. I respectfully request that you share my appreciation at the next meeting of the Commission's Board of Directors. So Larry, please carry that uh, uh, note of appreciation back to Ray. Oh, Ray's with us today. Ray, uh, come up and join us, and we'd like to thank you as a board and, uh, and me. Uh, I came for, because of Tom. I wasn't. <laughs> no, you didn't really expect <laughs> it. Exactly. I was just in Tom. Yeah. Oh, thanks, man.
Uh, in terms of uh, some uh, major events that have, that have occurred over the course of the last quarter for me, uh, I was uh, had the opportunity to join Commissioner Warbeck at a uh, 50th anniversary celebration of the Susquehanna chapter of uh, Tryon Limited at a dinner uh, in early April. And it was nice to join join uh, with, with the Susquehanna chapter because, as you heard from Bob Weber, they're they're a very uh, good supporter and uh, active participant in the NSS Waters program and uh, remain so uh, today. I attended the, the APO meeting, and um, um, that's when uh, the, the meeting in Maine that uh, Tom uh, was awarded uh, the, um, the Officer of the Year Award, um, and was able to go with Commissioner Bachman to visit the Lieutenant Colonel in Philadelphia for the Corps of Engineers, and uh, reemphasize the importance of uh, cold water releases out of FD Boulder Reservoir, and uh, talk about the long-term plan and the Corps' interest in helping us reformulate the reservoir and move forward with a plan to hopefully extend the fishery downriver for almost 30 miles if we can get enough cold water put in the reservoir, um, released from the reservoir. And, and uh, as with uh, um, historically the Corps' um, uh, management transitions from district to district, and, and um, the Lieutenant Colonel will, will be leaving, but will be passing on the importance of maintaining the momentum that we've, uh, we've built um, on empty water. We had a visit by the World Fishing Network of Pennsylvania, uh, and Dave Michael and I traveled to the Allenberry and, and the uh, Bill Bridges uh, fly shop and did an interview along with Ed Shank uh, for the TV series that is going to be airing in January, sometime early January. And it's uh, based on a book that was written by an author from Oregon called The 50 Places to Fish Before You Die. And uh, one of those places that was highlighted was Latour Spring Run. And, uh, we were able to talk about the importance of Latour and uh, the history of Latour in Pennsylvania and how it fits into um, you know, the history of uh, fly fishing in our state and the importance of it uh, in South Central Pennsylvania. I um, traveled to Butler County and, and was presented a, a um, $2 million check from uh, Governor Corbett for Clay Run Lake, which is a lake that uh, the governor found capital budget uh, authorization money for. And, uh, and by coupling that funding with our funding, with the local share, we're able to, to uh, package together a, a funding package and uh, move forward with uh, rebuilding Blade Run. I joined Congressman Thompson for a, a, a stocking of Black Machanic Creek uh, one day in Center and, Clear, Center and Clearfield Counties. And then we had a talk about what was going on in Washington. And it's always nice to meet a, a local congressman out in the field and get a sense for what he's dealing with in Washington and let him know what I'm dealing with in Harrisburg. We, um, Steve Craylock and I, as you heard from his report uh, at this meeting, attended the Fish and Life Business Summit in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and got a lot of tips about um, how to host the summit uh, of that nature back here in Pennsylvania. So we're looking forward to planning that out and um, teaming up with businesses across the, the state and, and uh, talking about how uh, fishing and boating are connected to other businesses uh, throughout the state. We had a nice visit with the NASCAR um, um, uh, family at, at Pocono Raceway last night, and uh, that's just an example of uh, some of the partnerships, non-traditional partnerships that we could form with uh, other groups in the state, whether it's convenience stores or whether it's NASCAR or Pittsburgh Pirates or the Philadelphia Union soccer team or the minor league baseball teams. We share customers with a lot of those major league sports uh, venues, and, and um, they're anxious to team up with us because they realize our message is very similar to theirs in terms of how we market um, sport, sporting uh, major league sports in Pennsylvania. The future, uh, I'll be attending a Pennsylvania Environmental Professionals meeting here at the end of the week, and uh, recognizing it's supposed to be a surprise, so I can't announce the person I'm recognizing at the at the dinner meeting, but uh, I'll be recognizing. Uh, a, a champion for conservation in Pennsylvania that's been working out in Washington for a number of years uh, at a dinner for, for the Pennsylvania Environmental Professionals. And then I'll be uh, traveling up to Kettle Creek Watershed for their 15-year celebration for their Watershed Association on Friday. The uh, WITF is sponsoring a conservation history project and we'll be having a special session with them next in several weeks uh, to talk about uh, memorializing Pennsylvania's conservation history. And um, I actually did an interview with Ken Walensky talking about, 
I, I guess, my part in that history from my 34-year uh, career. And, and uh, it'll be interesting to get together with people like uh, Pete Duncan and, and uh, Larry Schweiger and, and others who, who also had a, had a uh, true, uh, those that are left, uh, had, a, had a true meeting. And, and we'll be discussing our relationships with other former leaders like Dr. Goddard and Mr. Abel. Uh, and and uh, I'm not sure if anybody is still around at New Gifford Pinchot, but I'm sure he'll come up in the discussion too. And then finally, um, I'm on the host committee for, the, for planning the Bassmasters Classic, which we'll be having in August in Philadelphia. And we've been having periodic meetings of the host committee and building the personalities on the host committee to, to make that a pretty nice event. Um, Harold Luther from Cabela's joined us last night at, at, uh, at, at uh, Pocono Raceway. And, uh, Cabela's is uh, going to be an instrumental partner in, in planning out that, that Bassmasters event in, in Philadelphia. So we're really looking forward to, to, to showcasing that event and also the fishery of the low, Lower Delaware River. We have a Senate Game and Fisheries Committee coming up on Pine Creek uh, and also a public meeting, Chabot Commission Public Meeting on June 5th. Uh, hopefully some of you will be able to join us. Um, there was a lot of interest in that discussion in the Fisheries Committee. And then the Federation of Sportsmen's Clubs has their annual legislative trap shoot and dinner on June 10th. And I know a lot of you have attended prior dinners. So we'll get that invitation out if you can enjoy, uh, join the Federation at the dinner on, on June 10th. Uh, and then there'll be a, a reception that is hosted by the uh, Congressional Sportsmen's Foundation. They come in and uh, it's, a, it's a group uh, from Washington that, that works with the states and the various legislators within the states to, to keep things coordinated between uh, government and the legislature on the sportsman's front, uh, both hunting and fishing and voting issues. Uh, that's on June 11. And then a conservation summit being hosted by Penn Future, I'll be attending at the Alamary uh, down in Cumberland County uh, to talk about um, the status of conservation in Pennsylvania and some of the challenging issues uh, on a variety of conservation fronts. And I'll be attending a legislative caucus on the 17th of June. And I, um, I was invited by John Plowman. Uh, John has been an advocate since he less, left the Game Commission, retired from the Game Commission, uh, a continuous advocate on, on the conservation front. And then finally, I'll be in D.C. to talk uh, to the Corps about F.E. Walter um, on, on the 25th and 27th and attending a Sport Fishing and Running Partnership Council meeting. And then finally, I'd like to thank Katie Lester and all the BPL staff for hosting us here. It's been a really great time in the Northeast, and we had a, we had a really nice time. And really appreciate you opening up your facilities for, for us to use. So thanks, Katie. Mr. President, that concludes my report. Thank you, John. Uh, we had an executive session. It was held on Monday, uh, May 5th at 8 a.m. and the purpose was to discuss some personnel, real estate, and litigation matters. Now it's time for reports of the commissioner committees. The first one is mine, executive and administrative. We had two issues, both of which you'll see a little later in the agenda. One involves Speedwell Forge in Lancaster County and the other involves uh, the acquisition of a Nichols property in Crawford County. And then Tim Schaefer uh, detailed where we were in the update on our strategic plan. Next, I'll call on Commissioner Bachman, who did a yeoman's job with the voting committee. Commissioner Bachman, yeoman, right? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the voting committee met this morning uh, to consider uh, four proposed uh, rulemakings. Uh, one of them would be an amendment to section 93 and 95.3 to make the language uh, for lights or boats more consistent with federal regulations. Um, uh, approved a staff recommendation for, for board consideration. Uh, amendment to section 109.2 regarding uh, sail boards by adding the, the definition of a paddle board. Uh, amendment section 4, 109.4 um, to specifically prohibit hypo flying in Pennsylvania as being considered way too <coughs> uh, hazardous and dangerous. And amendments to the <coughs> reduce uh, re to uh, reduce the uh, section of slow no wake. Uh, near uh, Packer.
Packers, Ireland, uh, near Sudbury in the Susquehanna River. And uh, that would conclude, conclude my report. Thank you, Commissioner Boffman. Next, we go to Fisheries, Commissioner Masharka. Thank you, President. Uh, we had one final rulemaking off, uh, motion that we uh, accepted at our committee uh, and will be discussed later for final vote. We had uh, two, dis two uh, designations. They were reclassification as well as additions, adjustments, and removals to uh, classification of wild trout streams. Um, also, we had a very lengthy discussion of the, uh, the, the policy and how we bring that information forward and, and be more public with it. Uh, and then we had uh, four additions to Class A wild trout streams. And then we had 10 discussion items. Um, and I would like to thank all of our presenters of all those discussion items, um, which uh, took a little bit longer than normal, but we got through. Thank you. That concludes my report. Thank you, Commissioner Masharka. Habitat and Environmental, Commissioner Allen. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we met yesterday. We had one final ruling um, on the agenda regarding crayfish, which uh, we will discuss later. We also had um, three discussion items, two discussion items. Um, Bob Morgan gave us uh, some information on Didymo and the New Zealand mud snail. Also, um, Andy Shields gave a presentation on the update for the Pennsylvania Natural Diversity Inventory. Um, I'd like to thank both of those gentlemen as the discussions were quite good. Um, that concludes my report. Thank you, Commissioner Allied. Law enforcement, Commissioner Gablick. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we had our law enforcement training meeting yesterday. Attorney Kent, <coughs> Colonel Perlani uh, discussed uh, several discussion items, including the pollution hotline update, Marcellus Shale uh, updated us on the RCO's uh, patrol rifles have been upgraded, and we discussed a number of fishing and boating revocations. Uh, as well as the status of our upcoming WCO class. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Commissioner Gablick. Legislation and public outreach, Commissioner Sabatos. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, legislation and public outreach met yesterday morning. We had no agenda items. Uh, we had some discussion items, though. Um, legislative budget and finance merger report was discussed. House Bill 2143, combining the Fish and Boat Fund, um, Endangered Species Act. And we talked about funding priorities, and um, I believe that we need to revisit this as soon as possible. Um, we talked about license sales and marketing update, and finally we talked about the Pocono Raceway Partnership, and that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Sabatos. Public comment is, uh, well, Rick's not in the room. Did anybody sign up for public comment? Doesn't look that way. Okay. So that brings us uh, to the first item, which is flowage and burn easement acquisition at Speedball Forge. Like, is that right? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. 
Next item is easement acquisition, Nichols property, Spring Township, Crawford County. This item authorizes the acquisition of an easement uh, on 4,960 linear feet of Conneaut Creek for $65,000. The easement will for $65,000. The easement will be for public fishing, boating, and riparian and fishery management. Mr. Sharkey, uh, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the easement acquisition of the Nichols property in Calhoun County. Is there a second? Second. There's no further discussion on the motion. All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Do you have anything else? That's all. Okay. Thanks, Brian. That takes us to voting. Let's see if you can be briefer on these items in your process. Oh, I cannot be briefer than Brian. No, not Brian. Oh. <laughs> Not Leroy. The one that's not Leroy. The other, the other out. Well, good morning, Commissioners and Mr. President. My name is Amy Shields. I'm the Deputy Director for Field Operations, and I will be handling the remaining items for today in voting, fisheries, and habitat environmental, both proposed and final rulemaking. So the first one up is in voting. This is an amendment to Section 95.3, which is lights for votes. The amendment will allow the Fish and Boat Commission regulations to more closely follow the federal code. And this will replace the diagram in the current Appendix A with text. This was approved during committee. And if published or if approved uh, upon publication, notice of proposed rulemaking, and if adopted on final rulemaking, these amendments would go into effect on January 1, 2015. Is there a motion? Motion to accept. Motion by Commissioner Bachman. Is there a second? Second. Second. Ally? Any discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, now. The second item is also a voting amendment to section 109.2, which uh, refers to sail boards. This defines paddle boards and clarifies the need for PFDs and sound producing devices when using a paddle board. This is approved by the committee, and uh, staff recommends approve uh, a publication of notice of proposed rulemaking. And if amendments of final rulemaking uh, are approved, it would go into effect of January 1, 2015. You have a motion on this? So moved. Mr. Sharka, Bachman, second. Any discussion? All in favor? Say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Okay, thanks. Next. The next item is an amendment to section 109.4, which refers to water skiing, aquaplaning, kite skiing, and similar activities. This amendment would prohibit the use of airborne devices attached to watercraft, except for parasails. This was approved in committee. This is a notice of proposed rulemaking. We have a motion on this. So moved. Ally? Second? Second. Victor? Any discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? Motion carried. Okay, the fourth and final item for voting is amendments to section 111.49 uh, in North Ireland County. This amendment will reduce the length of the Sloan No Wake Zone of the Susquehanna River at Chickalemi State Park. A public meeting will be held in the area to obtain comments during the public comment period. This was approved by committee. If uh, adopted on final rulemaking, this also would go into effect on January 1, 2019. We have a motion. So moved. Second? Second. Second, Commissioner Warbeck. Ally Warbeck motion. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? Motion carried. Now we go to fisheries. That's correct. Uh, the first item for fisheries is final rulemaking. This is amendments to section 61.1 and various other uh, sections. This is referring to uh, an amendment to reduce the creel limit from 50 to 25 and increase the length limit from 6 to 8 inches to 9 inches for American eel. And this is for Pennsylvania to be in compliance with the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission and a coast-wide effort to reduce pressure on American eels. This was approved by committee and as this is final rulemaking, if adopted, 
it would go into a second by publication that's made for them. Second. We have motions or a second? Second. Second. We're back. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Is there any opposed? Next item is classification of wild trout streams. We have additions, adjustments, and removals. Uh, in this amendment, or in this um, designation, staff recommend that the commission add 18 new waters to its list of wild trout streams, adjust the section limits of three waters, and remove 48 waters, as described in the uh, appendices in the commentary. If approved, these changes will go into effect upon publication of a second notice in the Pennsylvania. This was approved by committee. All um, moved. Second. Senator Foster. Senator Foster moves. Commissioner Warbeck. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Any here. The final item for fisheries for today is additions to the list of Class A wild trout streams. The staff recommend adding four stream sections to the commission's Class A wild trout streams as described in the commentary and the appendix. And if approved, these additions will go into effect upon publication, again, on a second notice in the Pennsylvania Bulletin. And this was approved by committee. Well, we're back motion. Yep. Is there a second? Second. 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 All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Is there any opposed? Motion carried. Pass that environmental. Okay, the final item for today is a final rulemaking uh, amendments to various sections uh, regarding restriction of the sale, possession, introduction, and transportation of crayfish species in Pennsylvania. This amendment will restrict the possession and use of crayfish as bait only in waters which taken or if the head has been removed behind the eyes. Uh, after extensive outreach, there were no negative public comments in response to this, uh, to the proposed rulemaking. This was approved in committee. And if adopted, these amendments will go into effect on January 1, 2015. Mr. Gavin? I move to accept Ally second? Second. Is there any discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? Anything else? That's all we have. Thank you. I have a couple comments to make. Does anyone have any other new business to come before the board before I do? Okay, with that, uh, I too want to add my thanks uh, to uh, the staff here and PPL and also to Teresa. We know Teresa's a little bit under the weather and uh, she's really uh, facilitated everything here and always does a great job. The other thing is, I, I, I know that, uh, you know, as president, you know, I, I picked the locations. So we've gone from Erie to here, kind of opposite ends of the state. I, I just, personally feel it's very important to get around the state. Um, I, I, again, I know some people question that. Why, why are we going so far? Why are we going here? Why are we going there? I personally thought this was a, a really good meeting. Um, I thought that by moving it around the state, it kind of almost forces us to look at some other topics and to consider other waters. We get to meet other staff. And uh, so I hope, I hope that the board uh, agrees with that. I thought the presentations were exceptional. Um, I really thought this was one of our better meetings we've had in a while. And I think the presentations, again, just reinforced to me that I think our staff is uh, second to none. And I think they're, they're great at what they do. I'd also like to thank the Board of Commissioners, first of all, for traveling so far and accommodating this kind of, you know, opposite ends of the state kind of meetings. But I'd also like to thank the commissioners for their passion for their interest, and for their ability to find compromise in order to find solutions. Um, we're all very committed to what we do, and we all are strongly opinionated people, but the ability to, to strike compromise, I think, helps us move ahead. And I think a lot of that was evidenced at this meeting, and I appreciate that. So with that said, I'm going to ask Teresa to announce the time and place of the July 2015 meeting. Mr. Bros, I'll, I'll say sorry. Yeah. Teresa's voice. And, uh, Thank you. And, and, and uh, we have to Teresa. <laughs> our our uh, July 2014 meeting will be July 14th and 15th at our Fish and Boat Commission headquarters in Harrisburg. Very good. 
That's that. We're all in. All done. Take a motion. Is that motion? Is there a second? There's a second, Sharka. Uh, I wish you all safe travels and uh, thanks again for all your hard work to make this community. Thank you.